what does the Bible teach about business? That's what we'll uncover together on the Business in His Image podcast. This show explores strategies from the Bible that will help you grow your business, strengthen your walk with Jesus, and help you reach your God-given potential as an entrepreneur. The Bible is filled with practical wisdom to help you live for God while using your gifts. Let's unpack what that means for you and how you can use biblical truths to build a thriving business that honors Christ. Now it's time to dive in. I am so excited about today's episode. It has been a long time coming. With the guest I have today, I am going to be speaking with Jadelle Harris, and we're going to talk all about how to have a bold faith, whether in your business, in ministry, in any area of your life. So this is going to be so good. Jadelle Harris is a wife, a mother, and a minister of the gospel. She has a fabulous nonprofit organization called Girls Arising, where she's helping young women for the kingdom of God. And she is also a mental health counselor by day and a watchman on the wall by night. She is an amazing woman of God. So I just want to welcome her here to the show today. Amen. Glory to God. Happy to be here. Yes, I know it's been a little bit. We've been like trying to coordinate and we're both, you know, working moms. So I'm sure some listeners out there may relate, you know, they may be parents, they have a lot going on. And so I'm just so blessed that um, God finally orchestrated this yes. conversation. Yes, and move some things out of the way so that we can meet here and get this done for his glory. Yes, absolutely. Amen. So, Jadel, can you tell our listeners just a little bit about what you do and how God is using you in your nonprofit, in the marketplace, just a little general overview of, you know, what you have going on and what you're doing for the kingdom of God. Amen. Definitely. Definitely. So I am a counselor. I currently counsel in the schools. I counsel middle school and high school students, and I absolutely love it. I love my students. I love my kids. And I also have a nonprofit organization entitled Girls Arising, where girls arise in Christ, character, and community. And so just both of those roles include just me doing what God has called me to do. And that's shepherding children, that's delivering children, that's bringing up the next generation, and just considering everything that's going on in the world, just making sure that we as adults are doing our part in bringing up the next generation for God's glory, teaching them the paths of old. As we see our generation and the generations um, before us, as they're getting older, it's our turn to like teach the younger. So that's what I do. It's centered around just really just the youth, the children. That is beautiful. That's amazing. And like, where did that fire come from? When do you, would you say, was like that moment where you had that clarity from the Lord and just had that that passion and that fire to do the work that you're doing for the Lord? Yeah, man, that's actually a really great question because growing up, I said I would never work with kids. I would never, and I would never be a teacher. I would never be in school. And it's interesting because when I was younger as a child myself, I had like this natural gravitation towards other girls. Like I would always want to help mm -hmm. girls. Mm -hmm. And so growing up, I just thought that I wanted to help young women who were like in abusive relationships. But, mm -hmm. you know, when I returned to school to do my master's and things of that nature, the desire to work with children grew also. And I'm going to tell you what really catalyzed this entire thing I moved back to Florida in 2015, and that's around the time that I also seriously committed my life to Christ. And one day I was at this young adult, like a Bible study, and we were doing worship, and I was on the floor worshiping, like really, really pouring my heart out to God. And that was the very first time I had an open vision. And I had mm -hmm. an open vision. I didn't even plan on sharing this tonight. But I had an open vision, <laughs> glory to God. I had an open vision where I was literally running through what I describe and perceive to be hell. And I was mm -hmm. running through fire, this, this, this dark, devastating place filled with fire. And as I'm mm -hmm. running through it, I'm grabbing children 
like mm-hmm. literally running mm-hmm. and grabbing children from my left and my right and like throwing children on my back, throwing children on my front and running like at full speed. And when I turned around and looked as I'm running, I saw the devil pursuing me hard. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. out of nowhere, this blinding white light came between the devil and myself. And it was wow. Christ. He literally came. Like, this is literally an open vision I wow. had. He literally came behind me. And mind you, as I'm running with these children, I heard, how can I describe, weeping and, mm-hmm. and just sorrows. Like, the, the sound, was, it was just so agonizing, right? And as I get into what, I don't know, it's like the end of a tunnel. Because it was like this passageway I was running through, this hellish passageway. And then I just saw a light at the end of the tunnel. And as I'm getting closer to this big, big bright white light, I heard like choruses of angels, like this mm-hmm. heavenly, peaceful song. And, and I came out of that vision. And I was like, whoa, that, mm-hmm. that, that. So I knew that God called me to children. And it wasn't a, a forethought. It wasn't really a desire. I've always loved children. But over the years, because that was like back in 2015, my, my desires for children just have continued to grow and grow and grow and grow. And I just love them. I love children. I love working with them. They keep me young. And so I my, my focus as a counselor, the adults weren't that much fun to work with. <laughs> <laughs> and so I work with the youth. Yeah, the kids, they're, you know, they're, they're very, there's something else. So, yeah. So as a counselor and even the same thing with my, my, the nonprofit Girls Horizon is just, I've always had this love for girls, this love for girls and just wanting girls to be at peace and to be healthy and whole and really to know God and Amen. know that there is a love that is matchless. And that mm-hmm. everything that the world teaches is so contrary for yes. what God has designed and planned for us as girls and young women and women. So that that's just a part of it. That is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm sure that that is going to inspire someone out there. Crazy. There is so much to unpack. Where do I even start? <laughs> so I think the first thing I'd like to ask is how you received clarification about next steps, right? Because I think at times we get revelations, maybe we see dreams or visions or we hear from the Lord or get a prophecy and we don't always know what to do with it right away. So what were kind of some of the next steps from you as far as getting clarity, validation and more clear instruction from the Lord on what to do with what you saw? Right. Amen. So at that time, I don't think I even really understood fully that I was called for children. At that time, what was I working? I think I was, I ha- I was not working. I wasn't even working at the time. And around that time, I started to have a lot of dreams with me being in the school system. And I'm like, mm-hmm. why am I always in a school with children? And so one day as I was, you know, I, I had just moved back to Florida. So I was looking for for work, for employment. So because I constantly were was having dreams of me being in schools, I said, you know what? God is speaking to me. So mm-hmm. let me investigate that further. And so for the first time, I applied for a position in the school system and I went to like a, a public school employment fair and that's how it started. So my thing is, is that I submitted myself. You have to submit yourself to what you're receiving from God first you have to identify what's God, you know? And a lot of things, a lot of times when God has called you to something, you have a natural desire and a natural burden for it. Mm -hmm. And the more you submit yourself to God and submit yourself to what he has called you to do, that burden continues to grow and grow and grow until you start to actually do the work for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I submitted myself and then when I finally got into the schools. I started out as like a teacher and I'm like, man, I really love working with kids. I didn't love teaching, like teaching academia. I used to be, (laughs) I used to be in the classrooms with these kids sitting around me and I would be teaching them the word of God because they had so many questions. Mm. They had so many questions and I realized how much I loved teaching them the word of God and the things of God, but I didn't enjoy teaching academia. So I'm like, 
okay, I, I enjoy the children, but m- the teaching focus is wrong. I need to teach the word of God. And so it's double folded because here I am as a counselor now and also working with a girl's organization, my girl's organization. And so the organization allows me to do that type of teaching with the girls outside of the school system. And so it's just for you to submit yourself to prayer. You have to be prayerful. You have to be prayerful. If you have unctions and desires and it's the desire is not self-seeking, it's actually for someone else and it's actually for the glory of God. Those are indications that this is an area God has called you to and you have to submit yourself prayer and fasting because those are the things that bring forth clarity. Those are the things that sharpen you and then you look for it in God's word. God tells us to take care of the widows, the poor, the orphans, you know, to take care to the older women is teach the younger women. So all of those things. So you look for what it is that you're moving in the direction of. Find it in the word. Pray and fast about it. Seek God for answers. God is always speaking. He's always going to respond, especially if it's something for him. That is so good. Would you say that in the process, because I think hearing from God, it it gets a little bit, it's not to say that it is easy, but you hear his voice more clearly the more the deeper that you go into his presence, the more you're praying and the more you're fasting. Yeah. But as far as the physical component, right, the actionable steps that we're taking, would you say that as you were seeking the Lord about this, it sounds to me like you were taking steps of faith as well to kind of test the waters and see if God would open a door? Amen. Yes, you have to work. You have to do. Yeah. I think what I was used to, I was just always planning, 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 always writing things down, always painting the big, beautiful picture on paper. And then one day I'm just like, Janelle, like you're only putting things on paper and it looks awesome on paper, but you have to actually do something. Yes, and absolutely. Yeah, praise God, right? And so even with my organization, I... I registered it in 2016. That is when mm-hmm. I, 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 I did my research. When I said research, I researched for over a year. How wow. do you start a nonprofit? Yes, because I, it was a lot of work and it was just me. How do you start a nonprofit? What do you need? A lot mm-hmm. of things. So I literally learned as I went along, but I got tired of just sitting there and not doing anything. So I started to do things, even if I didn't understand fully what I was doing. Amen. You know, I just trusted God. I knew that God had called me to girls and young women. And I'm like, I can do this. And I just literally just started researching and did a lot of research. And I would sit there with my Microsoft Word and I would copy and paste <laughs> the steps I had to do. I yeah. would Google everything. And, and that's how I learned. And that's how it came into fruition. And even when it did come into fruition in 2016, I didn't even start operating, like literally starting the actual program for the girls until last year, 2020, 2022. 2022. So it's my my organization has been around since 2016, but we didn't actually start operating in as far as the program aspect until 2022. And last year, I was going to say, I was convincing myself, no, you have to do this more for Jeff. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, we're not doing that. It's going out there. And once mm-hmm. it's out there, you're going to have to, you're going to have to fulfill it. You're going to have to get it done. No, the, I wasn't holding it back no more. So yeah, you have to push yourself. You have to encourage yourself. You have to believe in yourself. And even if you don't have full belief, if, even if you don't, sometimes the world likes to call it imposter syndrome. Oh it's yeah. Oh yeah. You no, know? that's, it's the enemy. That's the enemy. I don't even, I don't receive that. I don't even ascribe to imposter syndrome. That my Bible says that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And I genuinely believe that. And so I push myself. And Mm -hmm. even now, I'm still pushing myself. Mm -hmm. So it's it's, it's a process. It's definitely a process. I love that. And what I felt like God put on my heart is that he gives us these desires and these Mm -hmm. dreams in our hearts. And we can think that it's selfish, right? Like maybe God puts... Like how God put that dream and vision to start that nonprofit. For me, God put it on my heart to start a business. And I questioned it so many times. 
I was like, Lord, is this really you or is this just something I want to do? And I prayed so hard about it and kept getting confirmation after confirmation like this is from me. And I just want to say to all of our listeners that just because a desire might look maybe, you know, quote unquote secular, right? It's not necessarily you serving in the church building. However, God may want to use that dream he put in your heart as a platform for the kingdom. He may want to reach other people through your gift, through what you're doing. And I've seen that come to life in my own business. And so that dream that he put in us is not just for us. It is, it's for the kingdom of God. There's other people that he wants to reach. And it's actually in a way selfish for us to hold that back because of him, we want to be perfect. We want to do everything perfect. I know that's held me back at times yes. that in, that fear, not fear, but it's like you want to do everything perfectly. You want it to be the best it can be. But yes. what happens is it holds you back from taking steps forward. Yes. Listen, that is one of the biggest hindrances for myself or has been. I, I rebuke that and I can't cancel that out. But mm-hmm. it's let me tell you what God revealed to me. And this was like in more recent years about that spirit of perfectionism. That is not of God. And it it drives anxiety because yes. it always makes you feel like what you do is never good enough. And mm-hmm. there's always this feeling of inadequacy that is attached to it. And so I struggled with that a lot because my mentality is Everything has to be perfect. It has, don't put anything out there. It has to look clean. It has to sound clean. It has to be presentable. And then I spent so much time on the back and like building, building, building this perfect thing Mm -hmm. to the point where it hinders me from even doing it or putting it out on the front end. Right. And so one thing that God was showing me is that don't strive for a spirit of perfectionism, strive for the spirit of excellency. Mm-hmm. Like Daniel had a spirit of excellency. You get what I'm saying? The, yeah. in the spirit of excellency depends on God. The spirit of excellency knows that it's not in your own power and it's not by your own mind, but it's the spirit of God that is operating through you to bring forth that something that he wants other people to receive from. And so a lot of times this, this whole thing of perfectionism is just, it's, it's a, it's a blockage. It's a blockage to what God is doing and for God moving. So strive for excellency and just trust that what God has begun in you, he will perfect it. And something else that you brought up was about the things that might look selfish. It might not look like something that's pretty much like almost like a ministry, like ministry related. And one thing I have learned is that God can use anything. To oh, yeah. People in. yeah. He said the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And the thing is that the, the harvest field is not just in the church. Matter of fact, the harvest field is not even in the church. And I always say this, that no matter what field you are in, you can serve God and you can win souls for God. Yes. And I, I I tell my husband this all the time too. I said, God needs people. He needs medical physicians. He yes. needs mental health counselors. We are the people who understand these things. God needs copywriters. Like every yes. arena that you can think of, teachers in the school, we need the people of God to arise in these areas. Because you know what's happening because of the secularism, because of how worldly everything is, it's consuming everybody. Darkness is consuming everybody. But if we, if you have a light in a dark room, the light is going to consume that room. So can you imagine if the people of God stepped in to who they are called to be in their area of business, in their area of education, in all of these different fields? We are the city on the hill. And I think yes. it's very important that we shine wherever God places us and not to think small of the things that we're doing. People may not have dreams and visions like I do. That doesn't mean God isn't speaking to them. Open your Bible. You'll hear him speak. Pray to him. You'll hear him speak. You know what I'm saying? So God has a work for all of us to do, no matter what area we serve in. That's so good. And can you speak to comparison because I know comparison is another thing 
that kind of coincides a little bit with that perfectionism. Mm -hmm. I hear this from a lot of other (laughs) entrepreneurs and other Christians. They want to, they have certain dreams that God has put on their heart and maybe they're looking at how someone else is doing it, what, how God is using someone else. And they think, well, you know, there's already someone doing that and they're doing it better than me. So why should I even start? Can you speak to that person and just give them some encouragement? Right. Amen. Definitely. Because I, I, I personally believe we all struggle with this at times. And you, I know there's a popular quote that says comparison is a thief of joy, right? I know recently the Holy Spirit spoke something to me and I shared it with my husband. And what I received from the Holy Spirit is he said that comparison provokes sin. Comparison provokes sin because when you compare yourself to someone else, you start to, first of all, pride comes in because you're saying, why, why is this person so good at it? Or why, why are they getting the acknowledgement for it? I can do that too. Can I type of thing? So it provokes sin, it provokes pride. And when you even think of Satan, when he fell, Mm. there had to, pride at the root of comparison is pride. It's not just Mm. insecurity. There's an insecure element, but it's it's pride. Mm-hmm. Satan compared himself to God and wanted to do what God did. And that's what happens when you don't know who you are in God. Because when we don't understand who we are and the specialty that God created us and designed us to and what we have to offer, then we are liable to compare ourselves with others, right? And so it causes rebellion. Satan fell because of his pride, because he wanted to do and be who God was. Mm-hmm. And wow. so it's very important that we shut that down immediately. When we see somebody, and I think it's human nature, and this is why we have to be very much like we have to submit our, our ourselves to Christ's nature, to the yeah. nature of God, so that the human nature, the flesh doesn't rise up. And the thing is, when we see somebody who's doing well and excelling at what they do, instead of comparison to me, observe them. Yeah. What is absolutely. it about them? Like, how did they get to this place? Mm-hmm. What is their character like? You know, like the sustaining things. So it's not, not, not to compare. It's not to compare because God designed us all uniquely. You can have somebody who's a twin and they're, 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 des- they're still designed. Their purpose is different from their twin. There is no two identities that are the same in the kingdom yeah. of God. It's just like our fingerprints. Everybody's fingerprint is unique to them alone. Nobody else has the same fingerprint as we do, right? And it's the same thing with our identity. So comparison is an identity issue. You really have not gotten the full revelation of who you are yet in God. Because if you did, you wouldn't need to compare yourself to someone else because you can't do what they do and they can't do what you do. What God has put in you for others can only come through you. That's so good. What has helped you to firm yourself more in your identity in Christ? Oh, the Holy Spirit checks me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Spirit checks me a lot. I I, I think it's conviction because mm-hmm. when, whenever I don't feel acknowledged or I don't mm-hmm. feel seen, I would start to feel negative emotions. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? And so yeah. with those things, I always, and I present that to God, especially if it's something huge and it's overwhelming, I will cry mm-hmm. out, God. I will cry out to God and God will redirect me to his word. And sometimes I would even sit there if it's really over and I'm like, I really need a word for this. I will Google how I'm feeling. I said, and I'll say, what does the Bible say about mm-hmm. X, Y, and Z? Right. And I'll find scriptures for that. I'll find scriptures for that. So, and that's, that, that's to me, that's a prayer strategy. That's how you defeat the enemy, the lies of the enemy, the word of God. You use your sword. You get what I'm saying? So just, just that, but just God, God always reminds me of who I am in him. And it's important to be surrounded by just godly company, people who can speak life into you and not just their own words, but use the word of God. People who see you in the spirit. It's very uplifting. You have to have people around you who see you. Yes. Oh, thank you for sharing that. That's going to bless somebody. Praise God. Jadil, 
wow, I love your boldness. And I'm sure that it may not have always been easy stepping into the public school system with this mission for the kingdom of God. That had to, there had to be some, and maybe not, maybe not, but (laughs) some challenges with being so bold in your faith in such a setting. Can you speak to that a little bit? Amen. Definitely. I would definitely say this boldness, any type of boldness that comes from me is all God because I in and of myself don't have that type of courage. It is only through the Holy Spirit because I'm, I'm like, seriously, I've been known even when I was in college, I could never give a presentation without shaking, like literally shaking, physically shaking, my voice shaking. I've always been that type of person because the enemy has kind of crippled me with fear, the Mm -hmm. fear of what man thinks, right? Mm -hmm. And so the more that I spent time in God and in his word, the more he built me up. Like the person I am today is a very huge shocker to me. And that's why I cannot take credit for it. And it's only God working through me that puts such boldness forth in me. And so even with being in the school system, I'm careful to respect, respect the rules and regulations of being in the public school system. And at the same time, I know what God has called me to do. And this is the thing. I cannot separate the mission from myself because I am the mission. I am the vessel that God has called. It's who I am. So there's no turning this off. You get what I'm saying? So I can be in a school system. I can be in a grocery store. I can be on the top of the roof. It doesn't matter. It's who I am naturally because it's Christ who lives in me. And so when I'm in the schools and when I'm working with children and especially in the role that I work in as a counselor, I get front row seat on the devastation of the darkness in this world. I see what children are suffering with. I see how the enemy is completely battering the younger generations and not just younger generations, parents, families, adults. You get what I'm saying? I see all of these things. And so because I allow Christ to reign in me, when I speak, he comes out. When I, when I help, he comes out. You get what I'm saying? I'm not in there preaching and doing all of those things, but it's I allow the Holy Spirit to guide me. I have to use wisdom. I have to use discernment. I have to be mindful of the setting I'm in. But I also know one thing. I will be remiss if I withheld the one thing that could set a captive free, and that's Jesus. You know? So... A lot of times I consider consequences on my job, but at the end of the day, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I'm not afraid of consequences and repercussions and things of that nature. And I'm also respectful of other people's feelings and their desires, their wishes. So I don't overstep. I don't. I, 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 as a light, I shine that light. As someone who has the word of life in me, I share that life. And, and that's, that's the best I can put it. That's wonderful insight. And I'm sure that it's not always easy. You know, that, you know, I've experienced this myself and I know others, other brothers and sisters have experienced this where when you work in a setting, you know, you're working full time, you're around people who may or may not believe in God, and you're busy all day. How do you stay close to God and carry his power with you and sustain that relationship when there's so much going on and when you're surrounded by so many different influences? Absolutely. Yes. Whenever you're in a secular job, that's just, it's like you're submersed in a water of sin, like a a fishbowl of sin. Like it it, it is difficult, but it's who you are. And it's important to have that time outside. Like me personally, I love the weekends. 
I love when I get to come home from work and I get to spend time in God and I listen to messages and I listen to the word and it builds me up again. So I'm reminded of who I am in God and why he has positioned me where he positioned me in my job place. And so when I go back there the next work day or the following Monday, I am reignited and mm. I am refueled. But so it's, it's, it's impossible to maintain your Christian integrity and your character and nature of Christ without being plugged in, in your secret place. Mm. You have to be submitted to your secret place. You have to be on your prayer altar. And that literally is what the season I'm in and what God has been speaking to me lately, lately is the importance of prayer. I am surrounded by people who do not, they're not believers. They're not believers. Right. And even if they are believers, quote unquote, they're not doers. They're not living according to the word of God. I have people on my job who rise up against me. And because the Holy Spirit is so faithful, he protects me. He protects my name. He protects his name. You get what I'm saying? So it, it isn't easy. It isn't easy, especially with my field. There's a lot of mixed practices. Mm. There's a lot of new age practices in their pushing that on the children mm. they're pushing but one thing about me i stand firm i stand mm. firm on what i believe if i don't believe in something i'm not participating in it i'm not and they pretty much know me at my job <laughs> they know they know yeah. me. i'm not overbearing or anything I'm, I'm not even a huge talker i'm really not i'm more like a quiet storm like i'm, mm. I'm quiet but i'm impactful for the glory of god so god has taught me to reserve some things, learn when to speak and not to speak. Remember who you're here for. You get with me? So those type of things. So I don't, I don't enter into debates. I don't go back. I don't do those type of things because that's not what I'm there for. But it's just, I'm reminded of who God is and it's what I do in my secret place that sustains me in the workplace. And have you had situations where you know, maybe in a in a kind, very respectful way, you let, you know, whether it's at work or in another setting outside of work, you let someone know that, you know, you don't stand for that. And did you, have you ever gotten pushback on it? Oh, yeah, I get pushback all the time. Some things, even in a job, like I was saying with the type of, because it's counseling mental health, the mental health field. So yeah, and they'll try to lighten it. I'll be like, oh no, I don't believe in that. Or, oh no, I'm not doing it. They'll be like, oh, it's just this. It's not, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, I'm a Christian too. And I, and I, mm-hmm. no, I don't believe mm-hmm. in that, you know? So I just, I just stand firm without trying to. Okay. Sort yeah. Of. Yeah. That's, that's very helpful. Do you have any other insight or advice that could help our listeners if they find themselves in a situation? Maybe they're working with a client, right? And everything's going great, but some things come up that go against their faith, right? And now they're in a position where they have to choose between potentially, you know, sacrificing and providing for their family and going forward with this. Like, what kind of insight and encouragement can you give to that person? Absolutely. Great question. My model, my belief is always go with God. When it comes to doing things for God, I think it's important not to separate your work identity from your personal identity. Amen. Yes, you have a role, you have a position, but it's still you in that position. And so when it comes to business, if you're an entrepreneur, my biggest thing is putting things out ahead of time, like putting things Amen. out which you stand for before Amen. then. You get what I'm saying? So I know there's Christians who are entrepreneurs, but their business might not be a Christian business per se, right? And then you have Christians who have Christian businesses, but I think it should be expressed what this business stands for, what the person who owns this business stands for. And if you're ever in a predicament 
where it comes down to your faith is being challenged and there's a possibility that your job is on the line. And of course you have needs, your family has needs, you have bills, you have all of these responsibilities. You can never go wrong by going with God, even if it costs you your job, even if it costs you a pay cut, because God is going to swoop in at the end of the day and provide, because at the end of the day, it's not your job who's providing for you. It's God using your job. That's just one way. And my thing is this, at the end of this life, we're all going to have to give an account. We're on borrowed time. This this world is wrapping up. Our life is only but so long. You get what I'm saying? And everything we do for eternity matters. So it may look like, oh my gosh, my life, my 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 finances, everything is on the line right here. What do I do? Always stand with God. Always stand with God because he's the only one who can cover you at the end of the day. Because you can stand up and deny Christ, you can deny your faith or you can do whatever you think is necessary to make sure that you sustain that job and they still choose someone else over you. That's right. Something else happens later down the road because a lot of times the enemy, it's the enemy that provokes people on the job to stir up issues like this. And I'm, I'm experiencing something like that, Mm -hmm. but I'm holding tight to my anchor. You get what I'm saying? And I'm Mm -hmm. just like, me, I have a confidence in God. And I'm just like, these people don't even know who they're messing with. It's not me Mm -hmm. they're messing with. It's the God I serve. And so you just have to know who you are and know if somebody rises up against you, that is not your fight. That's God's fight. You step down and let him take care of it. But you never deny Christ in the face of adversity, no matter what it will cost you. That's so good. That's so good, Jadel. Thank you so much for that. As we're wrapping up here, do you have any final encouragements or anything on your heart that you just want to share with the people of God before we close here? Hallelujah. I just want people to really, really be encouraged. Whether it comes to business, your education, your family, your life overall, the important thing is Christ. Amen. See, when that relationship, that covenant is secured, that foundation is solidified, everything that is built on top of it will prosper even when it goes through difficult seasons. Matthew 6.33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And I think because we hear certain scriptures so many times, we take it lightly. That is a strategy. That is a kingdom principle that when you put God first, that when your covenant with God goes first, that everything else will be added unto you. Everything that is needed will be added. The Bible says he even gives us the desires of our heart. Why? Because when we put God first, our desires are changed. They're transformed to match his will. And we get the desires of our heart. And there's nothing that is impossible. I don't believe there is anything impossible for the child of God because our word declares that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And I believe that. And I want people to really believe that. Stop making scripture cliche. Scripture is not cliche. Scripture is spirit and life. We hold the words of life. There is life in every word. So believe in the word of God. Use it, apply it, and it will bring life to every area that you apply it to. Thank you for that, Jadel. You have some wonderful resources on your YouTube page, and I know you're active on social media. Can you please share with everyone where they can find you? And I'll also make sure to link all of that in the show notes, too. Yes, so I can be found on all social media platforms at Love Jadel. So that's L O V E J O E D A L E, Love Jadel. So my YouTube is Love Jadel. My Instagram is Love Jadel. My Facebook is Love Jadel. My Twitter is Love Jadel. So I can be found on all of the social media platforms at Love Jadel. And on my YouTube, I do more teachings on there when I can and just sharing and preparing the people of God. That's wonderful. And if they want to learn more 
about your nonprofit and how they can get involved and help support that as well? Where can they find more information? Absolutely. So you guys can definitely look us up on Instagram and Facebook at Girls Arising, G-I-R-L-S-A-R-I-S-I-N-G, Girls Arising. And our website is www.girlsarising.org. Definitely support as we are bringing up the next generation of girls in Christ to the glory of God. And that's what we're here for. So girls are rising and love Jadel. Amen. Well, thank you so much again, Jadel. God bless you. And I pray that this interview, this conversation has blessed our listeners as well. God be praised. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, friend, I'm so glad you tuned into this episode. Really quick, if you are looking for faith-based business coaching to grow your online business, I want to tell you about the coaching program that was designed specifically for Christian entrepreneurs who want to grow their income without burning out and while keeping Jesus at the center of their business. You can go to thevirtualmama.com slash coaching to learn more about it. And I'll also drop that link in the show notes. Now that landing page is just for informational purposes only, and you will get an application there. Um, If you decide you want to move forward, you can apply, but there is no obligation. You don't have to submit your information or email or anything like that to be able to learn more about it. Okay. I hope this episode blessed you. Remember to please rate and review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen so that more people can be blessed by this podcast. Until next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Business in His Image podcast with me, your host, Joe Harris. If this show has blessed you, please share it with a friend and subscribe so that you can be notified when we release new episodes. My prayer is that God will help you soak up every bit of what you've heard today and help you apply it to your business so that you can see results. I'll see you next time and may God bless you.